Welcome inside a packed Stegman Coliseum in Athens, Georgia. The number one team in the country, the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks, will face the 11 and four Georgia Bulldogs in their SEC home opener tonight. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Alongside Steffi Sorensen, I'm Brenda Van Lingen. Well, South Carolina, the defending national champion on the road for the first time in SEC play for the home opener of Coach Abe and the new look Georgia Bulldogs. And this South Carolina team has met every challenge they face this year. What's the biggest challenge tonight? Well, South Carolina has, has gone through a lot. You know, they have been tested in so many ways, but they are the standard in women's college basketball. So what's the challenge in that? There are no off nights. You can't afford that because everyone's coming for you. And they've seen a lot of different defenses, Brenda, but they haven't seen one quite as relentless as this Georgia one. And they're, of course, led by reigning National Player of the Year, Aliyah Boston. But this team is deep and talented, and Zaya Cook is leading the way in scoring this year. Yeah, Zaya Cook, you know, she understands her time is now. She's leading from the front, Brenda, finishing around the rim. She is dialed in. What's looked differently about Zaya Cook so far? Her confidence from behind the three-point line. She is playing smooth, she's facilitating. And when you throw all that together, that's a good recipe. How about a chef's kiss? South Carolina wants her to keep cooking tonight. So good. Well, Georgia, their grad transfer, Diamond Battles, was the American Athletic Conference Player of the Year last year. And through non-conference play, she's led the Bulldogs in scoring, but held to just one point against Alabama. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't happen often. You know, Diamond Battles has only been held to single digits four times this year. She is such a big component to this Georgia defense, but more importantly, their offense. They need her in double digits tonight to compete against South Carolina. So 10 newcomers for Georgia this year. Three of them came over with Coach Abe from UCF. Diamond Battles leading the way in scoring. We'll see how she responds to that game against Alabama. Katie Abrahamson, Henderson, Coach Abe played here at Georgia. This is her first SEC home opener since she was a player here back in the 80s. How about this crowd, Brenda? How awesome is this? What a great way to start the new year as we tip it up and South Carolina in their black road jerseys have the first possession of the game. The kick out against this zone defense, and that's what South Carolina does as well as anybody in the country, get offensive rebounds, but Boston comes up short. Audrey Warren, the Texas transfer with the basketball. Well, Brennan, the first thing that Coach Abe said to us before we even really asked her a question, she said rebounding, box out. Before even we asked her anything, and that's a great start for Audrey Warren. Audrey Warren with the basket, a couple of UCF transfers in the starting lineup as well. South Carolina lineup looks very familiar. Cook, Boston, Saxton, Beal, and Fletcher, the transfer from Georgia Tech, finishing up the lineup. The new starter this year, another offensive rebound. That time it goes back in by Saxton. So that's the challenge in for Georgia's defense. They play a 3-2 matchup. They'll, they'll press you, but they fall back into that 3-2. It's going to be reba rebounding out of it because they're going to sink in. They're going to try and force South Carolina to hit perimeter shots. That's the game plan. They will adjust if South Carolina starts to hit. Knocked out of bounds by Brittany Smith. And yes, in the last game, in the loss for Georgia, they were out rebounded by 10 in that game. And you can see what a problem that will be against South Carolina tonight. Yeah, that's an, almost an automatic two uh, if South Carolina is getting on the glass. They rebound all, half their misses, and it's pretty remarkable how efficient they are once they get it back up. Strong that time, and it looks like Brittany Smith will pick up the foul trying to block out Aaliyah Boston. So checking in for Georgia is Javin Nicholson. And there's no doubt that South Carolina wants to get the ball inside either play a little high-low, Saxton to Boston. That's something they worked on a lot in shoot-around. So after Brittany Smith picks up that foul, she takes a seat. 20 seconds on the shot clock for the Gamecocks. 
Look at them right now. <laughs> this is what Aaliyah Boston sees every single game. Would you like that, Brenda? <laughs> <laughs> and to keep her cool through all of that. She's smiling through it. And that's exactly what Coach Abe said, is get your belly button up there to her hip and don't let her move. Offensive foul called on Saxton. All the attention was on Boston in the paint, but watch what happened out on the ball. Good on-ball defense. I mean, that's what Coach Abe talks about, is they're going to guard the ball hard. They're going to scheme a little bit differently depending on who has the basketball, but once it's swung, swung around, they're going to defend the ball. And that's what Audrey Warren has been known for oh, throughout yeah. her career at the University of Texas. She drew so many charges, such a great defender. She has a more expanded role in this Georgia lineup, as we already have seen her hit the three. Nicholson, Ooh, right around hands. Aaliyah Boston. A little bit of a deflected pass, but Nicholson, terrific hands. South Carolina, one of their first five from the field. Rimming in and out. Can't get that offensive rebound. You, you have to almost think of it as a, a victory every time they don't get an <laughs> offensive board. And all the way down the court, Chloe Chapman. Scoring in transition, so key for Georgia. Think about it because you don't want to let South Carolina get set in, def in, in their defense. Yeah, they're the number one defensive By team the in way. the country <laughs> in about every defensive category as Zaya Cook takes it all the way to the hoop. Scoring against this South Carolina team, so difficult, has been all the time under Don Staley. But this year, number one in scoring defense, field goal percentage defense, three-point percentage defense, and they're averaging over 10 block shots per game. Cook splits the defender, wow. and it ripped away. What a great defensive effort from Diamond Battles. Not only was Diamond Battles the American Athletic Player of the Year last year, she was also the Defensive Player of the Year in that conference. Yeah, that's the Diamond Battles I'm accustomed to seeing. Throughout the, the, the non-conference play, she is so pesky on both ends of the floor here, getting back, trying to stop Zaya Cook. Good scout, knowing she wants to go right. Forcing the turnover. Thank you for Coach Ed. you got to be pleased with the pace so far. You're scoring in transition. You're not letting South Carolina get set. Got them a little scattered offensively, playing too fast. The Diamond Battles will take a seat after that great defensive play. Zoisha Smith checks into the game. Number zero for Georgia. That one's stolen away. Kiera Fletcher. Nice ball reversal for the Gamecocks. Fletcher from the baseline, bounces around. You know, Fletcher's obviously a different point guard than Destiny Henderson, right? Destiny was so fast, so electric, but Kira Fletcher has experience coming over from Georgia Tech, and she can hit that mid-range jumper. Don Staley talking to her about, we need you to take that shot. It makes us different offensively when you're making them. Georgia only returned five players from last year's roster. Four of them are on the court right now, along with Audrey Warren. She lines up for the three, too strong. Great hustle. The extra effort gives another possession to Georgia. Five on the shot clock. All the way to the hoop as the shot clock is expiring. Zoisha Smith. One look at Zoisha Smith. She passes the eye test. I mean, she is built different. Boston buries her defender inside Mallory Bates, but Bates picks up the foul. And Alicia Lewis will be checking in, as well as Damari Flournoy, the transfer from Vandy. So already in the early going, Katie Abrahamson.
Henderson, Coach Abe, uh, really using her bench early. Yeah, I mean, she told us she wants to play 10 players. South Carolina can play 14 against Alicia Smith. Smith right by Bree Beal at the rim. What a start for Georgia. You said the, the challenge for this South Carolina team going against this matchup zone that Coach Abe has been known for at UCF the last couple of years. They've led the nation in opponents' points per game, and, and they're scoring in transition. I mean, this is the ideal start if you're, if you're Georgia. Don Staley not calling a timeout, wants her team to play through it. We said this would be the first time that South Carolina would go on the road in SEC play. Last year, the first time they went on the road in SEC play, they had their only conference loss of the year when they lost at Missouri. Bounce pass inside, Bates too strong. Georgia fourth, their last seven now. Boston travels. Well, Georgia has had a heck of a start here in Athens, playing fast, forcing turnovers. They are doing it all, and it's a hot start. The crowd on fire. Back at Stegman Coliseum. That is not a transposition error. Georgia up 13 to six in the early going as they've used their defense to create offense here in the opening minutes. Well, this is, you got to feel good if you're Coach Abe. Why are you getting points in the paint? Listen, South Carolina only gives up 18 points in the paint altogether in the whole game. Georgia already has eight. And the fact that they're really commanding the pace of this game, they're controlling the tempo, they're getting wide open looks. Their offense is clicking. Look, we talked their defense in the open, but when they're making shots, that's why I said this is an interesting game. Great start for Georgia. They're six of nine from the field on a seven to nothing run for Coach Abe's team. She was not happy with how they played at Alabama. They lost their first SEC game of the year by three points at Alabama. And now the chance to come back home, they have started with the energy that she was expecting. I think, you know, Bendra, if you're if you're Don Staley in, in, in that South Carolina huddle, everybody's just got to take a breath. Fast-paced start. Six minutes have already gone by. Georgia's got 13 points. Aaliyah Boston's only got one touch. Just settle down. I think that's, you have to credit Georgia's defense, right? They've made South Carolina, they've dictated the shots that South Carolina's taking right now, which, which is exactly what Coach Abe wants. Settle down. Got to get it into your post. Kick it back out. And you gave the story of the points in the paint, which is really impressive for Georgia so far. This South Carolina team on average doesn't allow more than 10 points in the first quarter all year long. And Georgia already with 13 points in the first quarter. You mean they're human? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> human for the first five, six minutes, right? Bates. Cordoza into the game for South Carolina, gets a piece of that one. I mentioned this South Carolina team, over 10 blocks per game. And then a foul called. Yeah, you know the old saying, bump the cutter? Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of that from Georgia tonight. They're gonna really try to rough things up make it difficult for South Carolina to get any kind of entry pass or anybody cutting through the lane. It's so really physical. So that's the second foul on Mallory Bates. So Brittany Smith back onto the court. And then a travel as Flournoy takes off a little bit too quickly. You know, Brittany Smith is an interesting player. She comes from, comes from UCF. She dropped 17 against Alabama. I wonder what the physicality against South Carolina, what it's going to look like for her tonight. Because she certainly has the skill set around the rim.
Ball reversal, too long again. Cordosa, no. Boston secures it. And a loose ball, and another held ball, this time possession arrow, South Carolina. This game has been so physical. Watch Georgia blocking out Aaliyah Boston. There's one player on her right now. Cardoso going up, one, two, physical, just making her life difficult. She came up from that play with a look of disgust because it is tough to score right now against Georgia. Raven Johnson, too strong, Cord Cardosa, another miss. South Carolina has missed their last five field goal attempts. An empty possession for Georgia. So hard to score if it's not in transition for Georgia. And then a foul on the drive by Zaya Cook. Don Staley in her 15th year, the reigning SEC Coach of the Year, the reigning National Coach of the Year, has not lost to Georgia in 10 years. It's a 15-0 stretch for South Carolina over Georgia. Her team this year the defending national champion. And the balance of this team is incredible. You know, I asked her about, you know, you've got 14 players that could start. How do you manage that? How do you manage the everybody that wants to get on the floor? And she said, it, I, I keep it real all the time. And I think that, you know, as long as a player understands and, and Don Staley's honest, she said that they can sense the fluff. There's no fluff coming from Don Staley. Don Staley has never been about fluff. <laughs> I think neither of these coaches uh, have any fluff to them. Zaya Cook hit the two free throws on the other end to draw within five. And Audrey Warren there to follow up. Can't get it to go down. Zaya Cook, she's got numbers. Three on one. Lewis gets a hand on it. Raven Johnson going to pull it back out. And Coach Abe is cheering on the sideline for the defensive effort in transition. Shot clock winding down. Cook rises up. One and done for the Gamecocks. Less than a minute to go here in the first quarter. The Bulldogs leading by five. It's a fun matchup to watch. Zaya Cook taking on Di Diamond Battles. Battles. And then a travel call. Maya Evans, the freshman into the game, commits that travel. Steffi, South Carolina has missed their last eight field goals in a row. Yeah, it's just unexpected. South Carolina, eight points in the first quarter. Bree Hall has it stripped away, but it goes out of bounds. Audrey Warren again with the hustle play defensively. She fits that Coach Abe prototype player. Just gritty, tough. Guarding the ball hard. How many times have we seen her out playing, moving her feet, slapping at the ball, trying to force a turnover? Georgia has forced 20 or more turnovers in 10 of their 15 games. It's a good recipe for success for Coach Abe. We talked about it earlier. When Coach Abe was at UCF previously, UCF led the nation in opponents' points for each of the last two years. That's what South Carolina does now, but we have seen good defense from Georgia here. And what a shot from Bree Hall to break the drought. 
and it doesn't go at the buzzer, but South Carolina with a little lift with Bree Hall off the bench, hitting the three to draw the Gamecocks within two. Well, South Carolina off to a slow start, but trying to chip away at this lead. Shooting just 25% from the line, but Bree Hall, when you need a bucket, call her. Breezy for three. So Georgia starts the second quarter with the basketball and, an, and a 13 to 11 lead. A foul away from the basketball, offensive foul called. Diamond Battles picked up her first foul. So another empty possession. For Georgia, they started the game six of their first nine. They missed their last three field goals and then a turnover to start the second quarter. Something that South Carolina worked on in shoot around was sealing that backside of the 3-2. That's the good look. Cardoso inside. It's what you want if you're South Carolina. Well, seven offensive rebounds for South Carolina, but only two second chance points so far. Diamond battles right there to strip the basketball away from Hall. And that's going to be called on Raven Johnson. Looks like Battles might have gotten away with a little push off. Aliyah Boston back onto the court to join Cordosa inside. Six, seven. Woo! All the way out in front. Cardoza scores it. That's her first basket of the game. All tied up. Three pointer. She got things going for Georgia. She ends the drought here. I think that's the look for Georgia, is you at least get two feet into the paint, you dribble in, you kick it out, you find a shooter, Audrey Warren drilling it from three today. Warren stops the seven to nothing run that South Carolina had. Now me here with the basketball. Use that short corner, Aaliyah Boston, too strong, and then a push off. Zoisha Smith gets called for the foul. Again, trying to block out. Camila Cardoso comes off the bench for Don Staley. Six foot seven. She gives you size. She gives up athleticism. I mean, all that. And then some. Brenda on the break, <laughs> making it look easy. But Georgia attacking, getting into the logo, kicking it out to Audrey Warren. Look, you think it'd be a high percentage shot around the paint. But teams shoot. Just 31% in the paint against South Carolina. I mean, that's unbelievable. That's, it's ridiculous. So kicking it out for the three is a good look. Hall picked up the foul there. So it's been a little sloppy with the foul situation. Georgia with it back and a three-point lead. Audrey Warren, a couple of three-pointers already. She's just a 26% three-point shooter. But she's a gamer. Audrey Warren already with eight points. She has surpassed her scoring average of seven and a half per game. And she's really playing her true position. You know, she was playing the four a lot at Texas, now playing the wing, much more comfortable. Aaliyah Boston with the offensive board and she's fouled. Well, looking ahead, here's our women's basketball doubleheader for next Thursday, January 12th, and it should be a good one. Angel Reese and undefeated number seven LSU are in Missouri to take on Haley Frank and the 13 and two Tigers at seven Eastern, six Central. Then Texas A&M hosts Rakia Jackson and the Lady Vols. Both games are right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app.
So the foul on Diamond Battles, her second, puts Aaliyah Boston at the free throw line. Boston, a 73% free throw shooter, connects on both. Those are her first points of the day. Warren off the screen. Cardosa just holding off Evans. The reversal to Johnson. Long rebound to Hall, but Hall stepped out of bounds. On the court for Georgia, Brittany Smith back on, as well as Zoisha Smith. Alicia Lewis, who a couple of years ago was the American Athletic Conference Newcomer of the Year, is on the court. Smith blocked by Boston. Boston just stays with the ball. Great timing. I mean, this is a, this this South Carolina team is unreal when it comes to protecting the paint. I mean, everyone buys in. Everyone's looking to block shots. Chapman kicks out to Smith, gathers. Javin Nicholson into the game, misses that, but an offensive rebound for the Bulldogs. Just their second offensive rebound of the game. Nicholson. Oh, you had it. You had it. <sighs> I mean, you have to credit Camilla Cardoso. She's six foot seven, but go with your gut there, Javin Nicholson. Cardozo, number three in the SEC with just under two block shots per game and definitely the intimidation factor there. South Carolina against this matchup zone. That was a pass attempted. They may count that as a shot attempt because it hit the rim, but South Carolina, five of 21 against this matchup zone. Smith steps back. She's coming off a game where she had 17 points in the loss to Alabama, but she led all Georgia scorers. A lot of teams have really packed the paint against South Carolina to try and force them into a perimeter jump shooting team, but you know, the athleticism Georgia has, the bigs that they have, the way that they cover ground, that is the great possession. Cardozo with the travel. She and Boston in the game together trying to muscle up inside, but the travel called. Eighth turnover of the game for South Carolina. Lewis working on Zaya Cook. Brittany Smith steps yeah. away. What a shot. That's got to be her shot. Facing up, showcasing that versatility we talked about. Javin Nich Nicholson picked up the foul. Her first. And Brittany Smith smartly faces up away from Aaliyah Boston. She's got the mid-range capabilities. Six foot three. Dropped 17 her last game. A great offensive weapon for Coach A. Trying to force the ball inside. Another turnover for South Carolina. Chapman using her speed. Too strong off the backboard. And Cook right back the other way scores. Yeah, it seemed like she might have got a little stutter step, yeah. Georgia still with a five-point lead. South Carolina just six of 22 from the field and 10 turnovers for the number one team in the nation. Nicholson. Four on the shot clock. Lewis steps back. 
Raises the front of the rim, offensive rebound. And a timeout on the court. Georgia has come in with the energy to try to pull off the upset over the number one ranked South Carolina Gamecocks. Welcome back to Stegman Coliseum. It's been the Georgia Bulldogs defense here in the first half. They're scrappy, they're tough, and they're tenacious on defense. Six steals on the night. They forced 10 turnovers. They've got 10 points off them. And what does that allow Georgia to do offensively? Score quickly, score in transition, not allow the best defensive team in the country get set. That has been a great start in the second, and especially here in the second quarter to keep doing it. And and some of these numbers, it's almost hard to digest. The South Carolina only averages 13 and a half turnovers a game. They already have 10 here in the first half. They've been shooting 47% from the field this year. So much of that is the offensive rebounds and putbacks, but they're only shooting 27% so far against Georgia. Yeah, and I, I, you're just, you're watching the 3-2 matchup that Georgia plays. And I think it's the quickness of the top three, their ability to cover the ground, the backside, really bodying up with South Carolina post. That has just made it difficult all night long for South Carolina to have any rhythm offensively. And South Carolina has beaten Georgia the last 15 times in a row. Georgia looking for its first win over the number one ranked team in the country since they last did it in 1996. So a lot of history on the line for Georgia tonight. Boy, they have been ready for it. Cardoza there with the offensive board and put back. Just now six second chance points for the Gamecocks. Georgia has been content here in the half court to use a lot of the shot clock. Chapman with the shot clock winding down has it stripped away. Fletcher there with the basketball. Nice pin inside, but not a good angle for Cardozo. You couldn't get much of a better look than that. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what South Carolina wants. Aaliyah Boston going to pick up the foul as Brittany Smith was posting her up. That's the first foul on Boston. Coach Abe played here at Georgia her first couple of years. She then transferred to Iowa, so she played for not only the legendary Andy Landers, but also C. Vivian Stringer, and has coached with and for so many great coaches in this game. Wow. Audrey Warren wow. with the spin. How about the game Audrey Warren has had? She's in double figures with 10. And, and her scoring has been pivotal with diamond battles and foul trouble with no points. Top of the key, splashes it down. First three-pointer of the game for Zaya Cook. She's got nine points. Smith Ooh. turns, kisses it off the window. So Brittany Smith just being a little bit more slippery around the rim. And rims in and out, and now an offensive rebounding foul called on Victoria Saxton. Audrey Warren, you talked about her being a gamer. Man, is she playing her heart out right now? And Brittany Smith, she's just been smart. Catch and shoot. I mean, you know what's waiting for you if you get inside the paint. <laughs> yeah, no you got to be smart, and we've seen that from Brittany Smith. Audrey Warren had a great game 
against NC State earlier this year. She had 18 points. In the five games since then, she's been in a bit of a slump. Not tonight. And neither is Brittany Smith as she's got eight points. I'm going to tell you something. The refs are letting them play. I mean, it is so physical down the paint. Cook driving is fouled and will have an opportunity to go to the free throw line. The first foul on Alicia Lewis. So even though the whistle's been blown a lot against Georgia, only two players with two fouls, Battles and Bates, so far. Well, what a college men's basketball doubleheader we have for you Wednesday night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Wendell Green Jr. leads number 22 Auburn against Terry Roberts in Georgia at Stegman Coliseum at 6.30 Eastern. Then we'll take you to Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville. Ricky Council in the fourth, or Ricky Council the fourth, and the 13th ranked Arkansas Razorbacks against Missouri. Should be two great games with some of the SEC's top men's basketball teams. Georgia has led by as many as seven points here in the first half of play. And a strong move by Javin Nicholson makes Leah Boston pick up her second foul. We talked about Javin Nicholson just using that pivot foot, staying strong. Gets Boston up in the air, drawing her second foul. And Don Staley got to send her to the bench, bring in Sanaya Fagan. Who, who is playing well. I mean, that's the luxury for Dawn Staley. She's, she's got basically three sets of five. Well, 14, but <laughs> numbers. And the, and the bench is outscoring the starters at this point in the year. Javin Nicholson misses her first, makes her second. Those are the first free throw attempts for Georgia in the game. And we're counting down toward one minute left in the second quarter. Second foul called on Brittany Smith. So now both Brittany Smith and Diamond Battles, the two leading scorers on the year for Georgia. The two transfers from UCF have both picked up two fouls. So Smith will take a seat. And Ami here at the free throw line. Ami here, we had a Great conversation with her today. She serves on the SEC Women's Basketball Leadership Council and has made such a difference involved with diversity and inclusion, has been involved with some votes on some legislation, talked to the athletic directors and coaches about the issues that are important to the student athletes, specifically mental health. It was just great to hear her perspective. Very mature young lady, very unselfish player. I mean, she plays pretty much one through five for South Carolina. She'll guard anywhere. She'll try to score anywhere. She'll do whatever Don Staley asks of her. Cook with the rebound. <laughs> Beal can't get it to go down. And the Tough shooting night for South Carolina continues. Yeah, what's really hurt them, five for 11 on layups. You know, those are some empty possessions that they've left points out on the floor. Georgia has been so physical. There's about a two and a half second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Nicholson going to take it right inside, can't go. Still time for South Carolina. Ami here lets it fly a little early and this will be the lowest scoring first half of the year for South Carolina. The matchup zone defense causing the Gamecocks some problems and they will go to the halftime locker room looking to sort things out. Georgia has led the entire first half and will go to the halftime locker room up 29 to 26 here at Stegman Coliseum.
an, an upset in the making? It's possible. Georgia in their SEC home opener up 29 to 26 over the number one ranked team in the country, South Carolina. Alongside Steffi Sorensen, I'm Brenda Van Ling, and I ask you at the beginning of this game, what's the biggest challenge for South Carolina? And you said? No off nights. <laughs> we saw that uh, in the first half. But I think, you know, the key was Georgia, not, not only what they were able to do defensively, but offensively scoring the basketball. I mean, when you're going up against the number one team in the country, it's not that you have to play the perfect game, but pretty much. And right. we saw a really good 20 minutes from Georgia. Georgia led the entire first half, and it was their defense that really set the tone. Yes, yeah, six steals, and it was just relentless pressure out of that 3-2 matchup. Not letting Aaliyah Boston ever get comfortable, bringing her down to the floor, walling up. Zoisha Smith in transition. Easy points for Georgia off of turnovers from South Carolina. And then offensively, hello, Audrey Warren. She had been struggling to shoot the basketball, but she has made herself available, knocking down shots from the perimeter, really opening up the paint for her counterpart, Brittany Smith, to get things going. Wondered how the physicality would really show up in this game. Brittany Smith, 6'3", going up against 6'5". She's used a high IQ, stepping out instead of stepping into Aaliyah Boston. Audrey Warren with 10 points, four of eight from the field. Brittany Smith with eight points. As we take a look at the story of the game, Aaliyah Boston has been held without a field goal in this game, 0 for 2. She picked up a couple of fouls. Audrey Warren, on the other hand, leading the way for Georgia. South Carolina never led in the first half. And as you look at the struggles for South Carolina, you can see all the way down the line what the problems are tonight. Yeah, I mean, Shooting 29% from the floor, you have to credit Georgia's defense. I think that South Carolina definitely left points on the board, just not knocking down layups we kind of talked about in the first half, but Georgia's already scored 14 points in the paint. South Carolina only allows 18 an entire game. I mean, they've got to really do a better job protecting the paint here in the second half. I'm sure that was addressed from Don Staley. Yeah, Don Staley's team, number one in the nation in so many defensive categories, but the fact that Georgia has shot the way they have in this game is a big part of the problem. As you said, Georgia's done it on both ends of the court. That's why they lead here at the half. Now, they only lead by three. But South Carolina going to go right inside yeah. to who you would think first <laughs> field goal of the game for Aaliyah Boston. Battle has been pretty quiet as well. The leading scorer on the year for Georgia. Short Warren, but a pass, an right? offensive rebound by Jordan Isaacs. Or a pass, that could be. She meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the key for Georgia to really pull off this upset, continue to do what you're doing defensively, but you got to score. Brittany Smith has been impressive, but clearly the, the memo from Don Staley is get the ball inside to Leah Boston. And that's the third foul on Brittany Smith. So Javin Nicholson will replace Smith. And we've already seen South Carolina has gone to Leah Boston, as you would expect, the first couple of possessions here just inside the three-point line. Here comes Georgia. I mentioned Diamond Battles has been quiet. No field goals, zero points for the leading scorer on the year for Georgia. She only had one point in their loss to Alabama. Warren has it taken away. Who else other than Bree Beal? We haven't called her name a lot, but a lockdown defender for South Carolina, especially along the perimeter. Cook, no, Saxton fouled on the putback. So first foul on Audrey Warren sends Saxton to the free throw line. Saxton 
This is her first trip to the line tonight. She's one of two from the field. Averages just under five points a game typically, and she misses both free throws. Really nice box out by Jordan Isaacs. The thing with Georgia is that they have actually, they've got great depth in the, in the post. So if Brittany Smith, you know, she picks up her third foul, you can, you've got Javin Nicholson who can come in there. Jordan Isaacs who can get around and bang in the post a little bit too. She's got athleticism. Jordan Isaacs was having a conversation with our official there and she had to get the ball back to get things set up cleanly. Warren off left. Leah calling for it. Boston muscling her way around in and out. Diamond battles with the ball screen. Didn't even look for her shot as she came around the screen. Warren steps back, pops it. Warren 12 points for Georgia. Bree Beal. Cook throws it up and in. Wow. Count it. Points have been hard to come by, but Zaya Cook stepping up, trying to make things happen. 13 points, 13 of the 30 points for South Carolina. She's getting herself to the free throw line. Somehow that goes in, but it's Zaya Cook. She makes things happen. And it's the second foul on Audrey Warren. <laughs> Zaya Cook already has the ball in her hands, and they are coming onto the court to wipe things up, if you see. Cook's numbers tonight. Not a great shooting percentage, four of 13, but she's been the spark when they've needed it the most. Warren will take a seat. Alicia Lewis onto the court. Big rebound oh and put back. There's the muscle inside from Saxton. South Carolina has not led in this game. They tied it at 13, and Georgia came down, and Audrey Warren hit a three-pointer on the next possession. Georgia has led by as many as seven in this game. But South Carolina has an opportunity here for their first lead of the night. Georgia really just packing it into the paint, not really giving it an open lane for a drive or a pass. Boston turns. How many times has that rattled in and out for Aaliyah Boston, and it's Georgia basketball. I mean, really rimmed out. Shots were accustomed to her just knocking down without thought. She's one for six from the floor today. She has had to work for all six of those shots, too. Lewis out chop, one of the UCF transfers. She and Diamond Battles and Brittany Smith all transferred over with Coach Abe from UCF. Boy, it looked like uh, Mallory Bates got held by Saxton there, but no call. And a timeout called by Coach Abe of Georgia. Georgia looking to beat South Carolina for the first time in 15 tries and get a number one victory for the first time since 96. All right, we are back. We are back. That was fun. Well, you have to think just the electricity in this city. You walk around downtown, everybody's so excited for the possibility of Georgia with back-to-back -back football national championships. But South Carolina 
defending national champion in their own right now coming back and taking their first lead of the game. This has got to be Diamond Battle's time to step up and score. She's kind of been a facilitator. She hasn't been aggressive or looking for a shot. She's got to go one on one. Make something happen for Georgia because they've got to keep pace. They've got to score with South Carolina. A seven to nothing run for Georgia. And Fletcher all the way to the rim. Georgia allowing too many points in the paint where they were taking those away in the first half. Boston didn't get the, the ball from once Javin Nicholson was able to block her out. Mallory Bates back irons it. Here comes Cook. Left side of the lane open. Lewis gets a hand on it. Great defense. And it goes off Zaya Cook. So South Carolina with their first lead in the ball game. We go to the timeout with a four-point lead. South Carolina was down at the half, and they have outscored Georgia 11 to four here in the third quarter. Yeah, shooting 50% from the floor, eight points in the paint for that third quarter, Brenda, and a big reason why is the message was sent, let's attack the paint, get Boston involved, get Saxton involved. That is the bread and butter for South Carolina. And in the third quarter, South Carolina was able to shoot 50%. As you see the comparison, the entire first half, just 29%. But they've already gotten those points in the paint, as you mentioned, such an important part of their game. A nine nothing run for South Carolina over the last three minutes. So now, if you're Georgia, how do you, how do you swing the momentum back? I mean, this is such a tough team. Yeah. I think shot selection is really important. And uh, we saw them take really good shots, uh, get out in transition, force and turnovers, easy buckets. We haven't seen that in the third quarter so far. So they got to turn their energy up defensively. Sometimes when they ha haven't made shots, it affects their defensive energy. That's got to turn around here in this third. Brittany Smith back onto the court for Georgia. She has three fouls for the Bulldogs. Alicia Lewis looking. Chapman around the screen, gets it. Good shot. Great execution by Georgia. That was the first basket since Warren made a field goal with 7.41 on the clock in the third quarter. missing Cardozo it gets away but it's still South Carolina basketball Cardozo just with four points she's two of seven from the field she's been very active but this Georgia defense has been very physical with her inside Aaliyah Boston not on the court right now and a nice pass inside to Ashlyn Watkins her first basket of the game Ironically, I asked Aaliyah Boston who we should watch for on this team, and she said, well, I think we got a lot of players, but if we're going to watch one, Ashlyn Watkins, who's got a tremendously bright future. And a freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina. Already had a 16-point game earlier this year against Coastal Carolina. Nicholson tracks down the offensive rebound. Coach Abe says everybody spread out. Chloe Chapman going to work. And it was kicked, so it will stay here. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Seconds 
Chapman with the drive to the basket. She is fouled by Fletcher. And it will put Chloe Chapman at the free throw line. You could see the last couple of possessions that they were trying to clear things out for Chapman, and she looks like she got hit in the face. Karen Fletcher with great length. I think it was after she went up with the shot. Yeah, got her right in the face. Credit Chloe Chapman was staying strong she through it. You know, as athletic as Chloe Chapman is and has the ability to get to the rim, she's only been to the free throw line eight times all year long so far. She's seven of eight now, seven of nine from the free throw line. The former two-sport athlete played soccer here at Georgia her first couple of years, makes the second, draws Georgia back within three. Look at the on-ball defense from Audrey Warren. Just so, and that's out of their three, too. And Coach Abe said to us, we're going to still guard you. It may be a matchup, but we're going to guard you. Guard the ball, and there's Warren again getting physical, knocks it out of bounds. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Coach Abe with a signal in for their defense here. Cook from the corner, splashes it down. Second three-pointer of the game for Zaya Cook. She's got 16. Biggest lead of the game for South Carolina. They did not lead the entire first half, but a good answer from Brittany Smith. She's been so good from that mid-range, you know, 12 to 14 foot kind of shot. Instead of diving to the post, she's just diving short corner. 11th time this season that Brittany Smith has scored in double figures for Georgia. Knocked away with good hustle from Chapman. Nicholson drives it and draws the foul. Cardozo with the foul sends Javin Nicholson to the free throw line. Well, what a college basketball doubleheader in men's basketball we have for you Wednesday night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Wendell Green Jr. leads number 22 Auburn against Terry Roberts and Georgia at Stegman Coliseum at 6.30 Eastern. Then we'll take you to Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville. 13th ranked Arkansas hosts Des Moines Hodge and the 12-1 Missouri Tigers. Should be two great games with some of the SEC's top teams. One free throw made there to draw Georgia within three. Great crowd here tonight at Stegman Coliseum. And they have been treated to a good one. Alicia Lewis picks up the foul. That's her second. Less than a minute to play in the third. Lewis leaves the game. Diamond Battles comes back in. Diamond Battles has not scored tonight. The leading scorer on the year for Georgia has been held scoreless by the South Carolina defense. Cardozo wow. gets it to go in, never even squared to the basket, and picks up the fourth foul on Brittany Smith, who had just come back in the game. And, and such a crucial foul. Brittany Smith has been such a difference maker from the post player, that post player presence for Georgia. But Camilla Cardoso, I mean, how impressive has she been all season long? Really turned the page, coming into her own in the South Carolina offense. And coming off the bench. Back irons that one. Diamond battles 
is fouled. Cardozo can't believe it. But Diamond Battles will finally have a chance to get a couple of points on the board with the free throws here. Second foul on Cardozo. Yeah, it's the second shot that Diamond Battles has had blocked. And I think she's got, you know, she's got the ability to get to the rim, but if you just add in a shot fake, take one dribble. 74% free throw shooter. She makes the first. She surpassed the 1,000 point career mark against Mercer and voted preseason all SEC, the transfer from UCF, last year's American Athletic Conference Player of the Year, makes one, misses one free throw. Don Staley has her squad right in front of the bench and calling out the play, about a four second difference between the shot clock and game clock. out of trouble. Cook. Beal knocks it down. Three seconds remaining. Battle gets it up and just short. South Carolina with their largest lead of the game. Well, Bree Beal is known for her defense, but South Carolina needs some offense. Find her in the corner, Zaya Cook buries it. Bree Beal, book it, baby. Zaya Cook leading the way for South Carolina with 16 points. Yeah, the last five games she's been averaging 16 and she's had to deliver because offense was hard to come by so far in the first three quarters of this game. But Zaya Cook has been left open. She's made the most of it. And when she hasn't been open on the perimeter, she's gone into the paint. But that three ball, two threes on the evening, two assists, more importantly, the timeliness of her buckets when South Carolina needed them, she delivered. If you're just joining us, Georgia led the entire first half as they led 29 to 26 at the half. They held South Carolina to just 29% shooting, but South Carolina with 56% Zaya Cook, as we mentioned, leading the way, and it's just a, it's been a matter of South Carolina taking better care of the ball and scoring at a higher percentage. Yeah, obviously shooting the ball better, taking better shots, more patience offensively, and the block party always continues. I mean, they've got six. But I can't I, mean, I can't count how many altered shots or right. just just getting in the head of Georgia players. South Carolina ended the third quarter on a 19 to seven run to take this lead. This is their largest lead of the game, the seven point advantage as we start the fourth quarter here at Stegman Coliseum in Athens. Audrey Warren got things going for Georgia in the first half of play, short on that three point attempt. here on the block, kicks it out. The reverse, and there she is again, Zaya Cook. She's just too open. And I understand Georgia's game plan. I think Coach Abe yelling at one of her players for not rotating quick enough. There's really one true three-point shooter for South Carolina. It's Zaya Cook, cannot leave her open. Nicholson in amongst the trees, muscles it up. Six points now for Nicholson, and it's really hurt this, uh, this Georgia squad that Brittany Smith has been out with foul trouble here in the second half of play. Cardozo with the rebound. And it will be Georgia basketball. The third foul called on Cardozo. Jordan Isaacs checking back into the game for Georgia as Javin Nicholson will take a seat. Oh. 
Audrey Warren. Zaya Cook right there to steal it. Zaya Cook fouled by Chapman. First foul on Chapman. Zaya Cook has already been to the line a few times. Four for five from the free throw line. Alicia Lewis checking back in. She will replace Audrey Warren and Javin Nicholson for Georgia also checking in. She will replace Jordan Isaacs who had just come in. Audrey Warren went off the court, but then she tried to go back on. It might have been the wrong person coming out of the game, but she has to wait now as Cook is at the line. She makes the first. Well, looking ahead, here's our women's basketball doubleheader for Thursday, January 12th, and it should be a good one. Angel Reese, undefeated number seven LSU, are in Missouri to take on Haley Frank and the 13 and two Tigers at seven Eastern. Then Texas A&M, host Rakia Jackson and the Lady Vols. Both games are right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Just getting started in SEC play. A lot of good games yesterday. Two of the players that are playing the best in the league, Rakia Jackson coming off the bench for Kelly Harper. She's delivering. Angel Reese, welcome to the SEC. She's balling out too for Ken Mulkey. Yeah, her numbers have been outstanding. Extra possession here because of the work by Mallory Bates keeping the ball alive. Gets Aaliyah Boston up in the air, but not able to finish. Letitia Ami here out top, so versatile. We saw her on the block earlier. She handles the ball, does so many things for South Carolina. They are just so deep, so talented. Dumps it underneath to Cardozo. And a timeout called by Georgia. South Carolina, they were down at the half, but it's been all Gamecocks here in the second half. They lead by 12. South Carolina leads by 12 in the fourth quarter here in Athens. Georgia had led by five points with 741 remaining in the third quarter. Since then, South Carolina on a 26 to nine run. And here's a breakdown of the numbers. Yeah, I mean, just what a difference in offense in the second half. Shooting 29% and then you're shooting almost 60%. And I think Zaya Cook going off 21 points, really just kind of calling her number and stepping up when her team needs her the most. And, you know, talking to Jolette Law, Jolette Law, who's sitting to the left of Don Staley, she shared a really good story with me about just the maturation process of Zaya Cook, how she used to go to the gym and get some shots up by herself. But Jolette Law drove by and saw Zaya Cook's car. And it wasn't just Zaya Cook getting out of the truck. There was three other players with her getting out to get extra shots up. And so it's kind of, the time is now. She understands she's a senior. She wants to lead. She's bringing the younger players along becoming a really good two-way player. She's proud of her. She has been outstanding tonight. Only three players have scored 20 or more points against Georgia this year, and Zaya Cook has 21. That's her season high, by the way, as she leads the way for South Carolina. Turnover on Georgia. Georgia came out in their matchup zone and caused South Carolina a lot of problems. Georgia led the entire first half, but South Carolina has taken care of business. They get an offensive foul here on uh, Ami here uh, under the basket. That's her first foul. Driving to 
the basket. What a nifty move there to draw the foul. Zoisha Smith with some good minutes for Georgia. Zoisha Smith, one of the most explosive, versatile players for this Georgia team. And that makes the 20th point in the paint for the Lady Bulldogs. Reminder for folks at home, South Carolina only allowing 18 a game. Zoisha Smith got a little help off the top of the backboard to make that free throw. One of just five returning players that were here at Georgia last year. Remember, they have 10 newcomers, six transfers, four freshmen, but all the five Georgia players are really newcomers in a way because Coach Abe and her staff are all new. Foul called on Georgia. Coach Abe not liking it. So what you're saying is she's really got to explain things a lot in practice. Is that what you're <laughs> We definitely saw that. They were, they were practicing, and you saw a few blank looks. But they've got those three transfers from UCF that are really helping the rest of the team as me here on the line. It's a third foul on Diamond Battles. Me here makes both free throws. As you mentioned, South Carolina is such a good defensive team. They have certainly taken the leading score for Georgia out of this game. Only one point for Diamond Battles. That's all she had in the first SEC game, too, against Alabama. And then a foul called as the foul was on Kiera Fletcher as they double teamed. Diamond Battles. Second foul on Fletcher. South Carolina, on average, only gives up 43 points a game. So <laughs> Georgia scored more than that tonight, and they get a tip in and a roll all the way around the rim. <laughs> Which was better, that or the free throw that got knocked in? Yeah. I like that last one. I like, that was I like impressive. the last one, yeah. Oh, the way to the hoop. Zion Coop, Cook again. A season high, 23 points for Cook. Smith. Dribbles into a double team, and Aaliyah Boston just grabs it away from her. Possession arrow, South Carolina. Again, Aaliyah Boston, help side defense, protecting the paint. That is the DNA of South Carolina. Cook shut off on the baseline that time. Throws it into traffic. Somehow Ami here comes away with it, and a jump ball will go possession arrow back the other way. Looked like a lot of contact on that play. But it has been a very physical game. Like I have seen many battles between Brittany Smith, Letitia Ami here, Aaliyah Boston, and whoever, insert whoever for Georgia. It's, it's been rough. But we had a couple of football helmets under the uh, I'm just table saying, here. you know, we ran, <laughs> we ran routes earlier. We, we made our, our national championship picks. Going with Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs. And we have to thank Trey Littlefield, who tracked down those helmets for us, went to the equipment room and was able to get them. So we had a little fun. We were going to go with the eye black, but it, it kind of stuck a little bit to your face a little bit too much. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Took me 30 minutes to get off. Helmets were better. They did, you know, they're definitely heavy. Ooh. Yeah, you know, I always wanted to be a football player until I put the helmet on. It's just too heavy. So Georgia continuing to battle. Put the ball on the floor and get a trip to the free throw line. Zoisha Smith, one of those players that is returning from Georgia, just averaged three points a game last year as a sophomore, over seven points a game this year under Coach Abe. Aaliyah 
Boston picked up her third foul. Leah Boston held to just four points tonight by the Georgia defense, one of six from the field, and a couple of free throws made. Fletcher, the transfer from Georgia Tech, four-year player for Georgia Tech, didn't play last year because of an injury. There she is in the corner. Cook, she knew it was in when it left her hands. Twenty-six points for Zaya Cook, just one point away from her career high. Ami here in the open court takes it right at the defender, and it's going to be a blocking foul. Zai Cook, 26 points on the day. Out here looking like Steph Curry. Knows it's in, runs back. How about the chef kiss? Show it to me. Mm. That must be her new signature. What is it, celebration? Yeah. I'm liking it. She is playing with so much confidence tonight. Four of 12 from three-point range, eight of 19 overall, six of seven from the free throw line, 26 points. A foul on Flournoy. Me here missing the free throw. All the way to the offside of the rim again, Zoisha Smith. And the travel called on Raven Johnson. Smith, someone Coach Abe really high on. Just getting her feet wet with this Georgia system Coach Abe's brought from UCF. Explosive goes by Zaya Cook. I mean, you want the eye test. Smith's got it. She had a career high earlier this year, 21 points and 10 rebounds against Georgia Tech. Coach Abe saying probably their best game of the year so far was against Georgia Tech. Their losses are to Seton Hall, NC State, West Virginia, and Alabama. trying to split a couple of defenders. Lewis, thought she had a couple of numbers, but really good defensive transition from South Carolina. Nicholson going to go at Boston short. Warren Who tracks else? it down. Top of the key, Lewis. Cook has it bottled up by Lewis. Jump ball, no basket, but possession arrow stays on this end. And a timeout called by Don Staley. 2.35 remaining, South Carolina with a 14 point lead. Don Staley, you talked about at halftime, you can't have an off night. You're, yeah. They're always going to have a target on their back. How, in your estimation, have they responded here in the second half? I'm brilliant, brilliantly. I mean, you're on the road. Wins are hard to come by no matter what. Then you get into conference play. Got a packed house here in Athens. A motivated Georgia team who lost to Alabama. South Carolina just, they got punched in the first half. and and. Went right back to the drawing board, said we're going to get the ball inside, we're going to play better defense, and we're going to give the ball to Zaya Cook. And she's delivered. And when you got stars, you can make plays, you can call her number and they can deliver. 26 points for Zaya Cook, the All-American. Last year, SEC second team, making her case. Trying to raise her draft stock for the WNBA. 
the recognitions that she deserves as a, a valuable member and leader on this team. And a reach in foul as Lewis catches the ball. It's on, I'm sorry, I says Boston catches the ball. The foul's on Lewis. Her third foul. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how this Georgia team continues to evolve under Coach Abe, not only throughout this year as everybody learns the system, but as she grows this team. Yeah. You know, being back at her alma mater, and she played both at Georgia and Iowa during her career, but so excited to be back here. Coach Andy Landers, her coach, came and talked to us, of course, at halftime. Well, I think we, we got a, Brenda, we got a glimpse of what this Georgia team can look like when they put it together on both ends. And I know Coach Abe was excited about this team because she's got some shooters. And we saw that in the first half. Audrey Warren hitting threes, the way that Brittany Smith was playing. Diamond Battles has largely been ineffective today. Yeah. And this is the second game where she's not really, you know, not been able to get to scoring. She's not necessarily facilitating offensively or getting steals. And that's a player that they need to have step up. Zaya Cook with that free throw sets her career high in this game, 28 points, surpassing 27 points she had way back in November of 2019. So just a, when? <laughs> exactly, before COVID. <laughs> Can we even remember before <laughs> then? Yes. So what a day for Zaya Cook as her team needed it down in the first half. Amin here picks up the foul to send Javin Nicholson to the free throw line. Nicholson averages eight points per game for Georgia. She's got Nine now, double figures for Nicholson. Warren right there, and it gets away from her. She had the ball in her possession, but it slipped away. How many times has she been on the ground tonight? That's kind of typical Maybe for her, her number, 31 times? I mean, I think that's <laughs> right. See the cue collar around her neck. She's had trouble with concussions during the course of her career, plays very physically, and that helps her with as, as physical as she played. And Don Staley calls a timeout because Cook was pinned against the half court line with a couple of defenders around her. And Don Staley can't catch the ball right there at half court. Well. Well, here we are in Athens, Georgia. You and I already put the Georgia football helmets on with our pick for the college football championship, but let's make a little comparison here. The 2022 champions, Don Staley, Kirby Smart, they've got that in common. Both undefeated this season. They've got that in common and both the next class coming in ranked number two in the nation. Lots of similarities. You know, even going back to last year, both teams lost their conference tournament championships, then went on to go to become national champions. You know, I think what, what Dawn has been able to do at South Carolina, just her leadership, her community involvement, keeping it real with her players, they love that about her. And I know that Kirby and what he's been able to do at Georgia, players flock to him. You know, he's a football guy. He's a football guy through and through, married to women's basketball player, smart guy. <laughs> but got Athens rolling. So Georgia picks up the pressure and really never got possession, so that's a shot clock violation on South Carolina. So there are a lot of things that Georgia can hang their hat on in this game. Yes, it's going to be, it looks like a double digit deficit at the end of this game if they don't close it out. But being ahead of the number one team in the country, the defending national champions, all the entire first half, scrapping it out here in the second half, good plays like that. Yeah, I mean, just relentless pressure. We heard Don Staley just telling her team, hey, 
this Georgia defense is different. It's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be aggressive and really physical. We've seen that. When Georgia puts it together and they're scoring inside and out and the way that they defend, that's <laughs> we saw how good they can be. As they wipe the floor, we'll take a look at the upcoming schedule for Georgia. They host Kentucky this Thursday, then at Florida on Sunday. It just doesn't get easier here, does it? <laughs> and Ole Miss with the win over Mississippi State. Yeah, that was a good win for Coach Yo and Ole Miss. And then Tennessee coming up. They won their 500th game at Thompson Bowling Arena. Audrey Warren had such a good first half. She's continued to battle and be aggressive defensively, but has cooled off scoring. Diamond Battles picked up the foul, her fourth. And it will send Cook to the free throw line. Cook already with a career high. She only scored four points in the first quarter, then seven in the second quarter, five in the third, and 12 here in the fourth quarter. Really separated South Carolina. <laughs> 29, the new career high for Zaya Cook. down. Zaya Cook has not taken her foot off the gas tonight as Warren picks up the foul, her third. South Carolina looks like they are going to get the win here in their first road game in SEC play as they have Auburn coming up at home. Then they'll be at Mississippi State next Sunday at Kentucky and then Missouri at home on January 15th. Cook makes both free throws. She's got 31. Timeout for a substitution to get Ashlyn Watkins into the game. And a few other substitutes as well. Chloe Kitts, who just left her high school less than a month ago, is out on the court, number 21, as well as Talasia Cooper, number 11. Last time, a South Carolina Gamecock scored over 30 points. It was Taya Cooper back in November of 2018. So we've seen Zaya Cook having her best game since 2019. Best game for the Gamecock over 30 points since 2018. Well, we're so accustomed to seeing South Carolina really spread out. Just a lot of balance offensively, especially this year. I mean, Don really can play her full bench. But you, we noticed tonight she didn't really have to, she didn't really go to the bench that much. She let her starters lead the way to close out this game. And Zaya Cook, I mean, she, she delivered big time for them. Warren knocks that one out of bounds. And that 
will do it. South Carolina was down the entire first half. Came back for the 68 to 51 victory as South Carolina goes to 14 and 0 on the year. Georgia drops to 11 and 5. What a comeback for South Carolina. Just sticking to what they do best. Getting the ball inside, relying on your seniors, your veterans protecting the paint ultimately just not enough offense for Georgia in that second half and too much offense from Zia Cook. Zia Cook finishing the game with the 31 points. She had 15 points in the fourth quarter to finish it off. Well our final score is South Carolina 68 Georgia 51 coming up next. We have a replay of Saturday's college football playoff semifinal Ohio State versus Georgia. For Steffi Sorensen and our entire SEC Network crew, I'm Brenda Van Lingen. So long from Athens, Georgia.